بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله وكفاه والصلاة والسلام على رسوله المصطفى وعلى عباده الذين ارتضى ومن بهداه مهتدى وبآثار أهل المدينة اقتفى وبعد فسلام الله عليكم ورحمته تعالى وبركاته وأهلا وسهلا Welcome back to Fast and Ficious Alright So we've got uh, Today we're going to be taking a look at a question uh, which once again concerns many people, especially within uh, perhaps Europe and most definitely within the UK. And the question is, do I need to follow a particular calendar for Fajr? Now, I've chosen this question because, as you can imagine, it is just too relevant. It has uh, so many perhaps consequences, or at least people feel it has consequences, and it's concerned a lot of people throughout the entire country so i'd just like to respond that what's led to this problem is that we have many calendars throughout the uk that are being issued by local masajid where the time is varying quite drastically so you will have some calendars state something like fajr begins so the fast must end uh, as in it must begin as in your eating for the fast must end at I don't know, something like 1 or 8 in the morning to some calendars, maybe stretching it to something like half 3 or something slightly beyond that or some. So you've got a huge variation. We've also, we also know that sunrise is right now perhaps about quarter to five uh, approximately. I mean, it depends where you are within the UK, uh, 4.45 a.m. approximately. So there is a huge gap here. You can see that, well, you know, if you beginning on this end of the spectrum, begin your fast at, let's say, uh, 1 or 8 or 10 past 1 in the morning, then you've got up until, let's say, 4.45 to pray your Fajr. And then on this hand, you've got a much shorter time frame. And so this has led to a lot of confusion. People are asking, up and down the country that what should we be doing some people are stressing that you should be uh, this is the time for the fast and if you don't then your fast has been violated other people are saying no it's okay some people are basing this back on the degrees of depression of the sun below the horizon in terms of should it be 15 degrees 18 degrees right okay so let's kind of break this down first of all I want to just clarify my response by saying that it does not matter whichever calendar you follow okay if you choose to follow one that says three something that is absolutely fine if you choose to follow one that says one something that is absolutely fine it is your choice there is no compulsion and there is no re real blame upon you and people cannot try to use a guilt trip by trying to say that oh you're playing with the dean or you're turning this into a joke you are most certainly not turning this into a joke this is anything but a joke right you are fasting an incredible um, lengthy day one of the most longest uh, or lengthiest days for fasting throughout the entire world you are anything but treating this as a joke so please uh, we should not really engage in this type of discourse where people are throwing these type of accusations as to what is actually going on here so let me explain we've got quite a few things going on first of all within the uk we are going through the period of the year which some people refer to as the twilight period where you have this persistent glow this light in the horizon that it it just does not disappear so normally let me just to simplify matters that when the sun sets after i mean so maghrib kicks in you would have a, a light in the horizon now that will kind of then turn from let's say a glowing red to an uh, i mean so you'll have like it'll go through colors like from a red to an orange yellow it'll kind of fade into a white horizon eventually and then usually the white horizon would also disappear and then there would just be a darkness and then that would continue throughout the night until fajr kicks in and you'd see this white white type of light appear in the horizon again and then it would just spread and it would be fajr time and then it would just get brighter and and so on until sunrise now that would be a standard um, type of cycle what happens during a particular time of the year for a few months uh, a couple of months or 
and definitely for several weeks within the UK is that the, the horizon does not actually disappear. So the whiteness definitely doesn't disappear. And according to some places, maybe the redness and so on, that too remains as well. But the whiteness definitely does not disappear into a complete dark black horizon. Now, first of all, OK, that will bring about its problems for Isha. And that can be estimated and is estimated. But more importantly, it brings about its, its problem for when does Fajr actually begin? Because if we cannot see when this white new whiteness appears, so at what point would we decide that Fajr has actually begun? So, as you can imagine, uh, people have taken many approaches. And some would say um, that, okay, what we will do is they've all agreed that we will estimate the time of Fajr to come in. And we are actually during this period right now so people would say okay we will estimate the time for Fajr to come in some will say okay we will just go by an, a calculation so we will we've realized that let's say during um, I don't know an average given time of the year between sunrise and Fajr there is something like one and a half hour let's just say so they will say okay we will every day just allocate one and a half hour for this time before sunrise other people may say that we could go by the nearest type of country where there is a normal or standardized time available. And what some people have done is they have said, let's just take the entire night. We'll split it in half down the middle. The first half will allocate for Maghrib and Isha. The second half will allocate for Fajr. And this kind of also brings us to what's going on now in terms of saying, well, OK, Fajr begins at one something in the middle of the night. So this kind of lands us there. As you can see, this is complicated for Salah, but it becomes even more dynamic with the element of Psalm, of fasting, because now people are much more concerned because although unfortunately many people do not or are not so uh, punctual with their prayers, uh, many more, in fact, most Muslims are punctual with their fasting. So it's become an issue. And that's what it is. And then some people have also added the elements of the degrees of depression that historically Muslim scientists and Muslim uh, scholars who were scientists as well, they had kind of measured in the scale in how many degrees is the sun below the horizon for the light to kind of kick in. And some people had said it was 18 and they measured it in various parts of the world and they felt it was 18 and some had said it was 15. And I know many ulama have uh, and there are many ulama who have conducted their own studies. I know of some who have conducted their studies within the UK to have found the degrees of depression for Fajr to kick in between to be anything between perhaps 12 to 14. And and here people have taken their stances. So some people have said, no, it must be 18 because these scholars said it in their books. And other people have said, well, look, that's fine. But they lived in a particular part of the world, which wasn't so far north in in the hemisphere and therefore they had a variation and so on i would say look it's do you do not need to get too concerned about the, the degrees of depression below the horizon it's okay for you uh, as an individual to follow any calendar that makes life um feasible really and makes the uh, ramadan much more easier for you the hadith of the prophet ﷺ, which is muttafaqun alayhi teaches us yassiru wa la tu'assiru to make things easy and not difficult and in this in in line if, or in the verse to do with fasting in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when explaining why this month is uh, so sacred the shahr ramadan alladhi unzila fihi alquran that the quran was revealed in this month Allah continues uh, with the verse then to say, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعَصْرِ That Allah wants ease for you. He does not want difficulty nor hardship. So with that, people, I'll leave you for today. Till our next question, take care and remember me in your du'as. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.